unfortunately, one of our speakers had to cancel, and normally there would have been a talk by Thomas Kutuba, but he's ill and he had to cancel. So uh, now we will have Holger Waltersdorf instead, who will talk to us about the async PHP equips. Uh, Holger is also a member of the PHP user group in Dresden, or the founder of the PHP. Co founder, PHP. yes. Co founder. <laughs> And he also organizes the PHP Dev Days in Dresden. So please go ahead, Paul. Thank you very much. Yeah, as you said, my name is. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Holger. Um, I'm working for Fortune Globe. Uh, we are doing e commerce for the fashion industry. Um, you can find me on Twitter and on GitHub and on several other places. As he mentioned, I'm running the PHP user group. Uh, or at least I'm one of the runners of the PHP user group. So, and today um, I want to talk about PHP and asynchronous requests. And PHP, PHP and async always was kind of love-hate relationship um, because asynchronous requests are not built in to PHP. So not really. Um, so to demonstrate the whole thing, um, I chose a very simple use case. Um, let's consider we have a PHP creation, uh, PDF creation service, um, which basically on management level looks like this. Yeah? So um, the user sends a request to the web service and uh, the web service creates three uh, PDF files. So if we have only three PDF files, we can produce them sequentially, um, which is kind of okay because it's not consuming too, many, too much time. But what if we have a lot of PDFs that we have to create in the same time? Uh, if we do that sequentially, so we have to create nine PDFs now, um, that probably will take a lot of time. And uh, it's maybe not fast enough for the user and for your web service and everything. So what we are basically doing or need is uh, we need to parallelize uh, those requests or those creation of the PDF um, yeah, to make it faster for the end user um, because we are doing multiple jobs at the same time. So uh, let's look back. Um, how did we try to do asynchronous requests in PHP uh, in the past? So uh, I have some code snippets. Um, please take them funny because they are. Uh, yeah, we did something like that, right? Create PDF, def no, throw it away. Uh, you can do the same thing with shell exec uh, or proc open. It's basically all the same thing. That works since PHP 4. Yeah, so even if you run very old PHP, you can do that. So that works, of course, but we have a lot of downsides here. Um, first, we need to call the script in CLI mode, which is a completely different environment than our web service. Um, if we have a long command with a lot of options for the PDF, uh, that command gets quite messy. Um, yeah, Dartler handling is uh, based on the argv uh, from the CLI, and um, we don't get any response back because we are sending everything to devnull. Uh, yeah, try that uh, on debugging, especially in production. Um, so let's do some HTTP because everybody can HTTP, right? So uh, yeah. Next thing is we are doing curl request, same script. Um, and the clue is here, the timeout millisecond one. That makes it really sent asynchronously. Um, so the curl is coming back here and uh, closes um, after, uh, so the script is running and the curl, uh, the curl resource is closed. Um, so basically it's the same behavior. We are sending everything to devnull because we don't get any response back. So um, the problem here is we have a web server involved because we are sending an actual HTTP request. Um, the web server can be overhead, of course, because HTTP has some overhead, uh, and can also be an error, error source um, when, come, when it comes to debugging. So maybe even a local answer is involved, so you have another system in front of that. Um, so you have two environments that you have to maintain, at least. Um, you need the curl extension um, in PHP. Uh, again, the response is 
um, thrown away, and the called script must be exposed under the document route. So that could be also a security issue, depending on the job that you are doing in the background. Um, in this case, when you want to call it over an URL, uh, you have to expose it uh, to the web server. So we also tried very hard uh, doing async stuff by just building up queues, right? Um, so just put that script in the queue and then create a uh, cron tab that is running every minute um, and is running those scripts. So of course, also that works, um, but you don't have on-demand execution. So it's uh, not suitable for a web service, of course. Um, it needs a lot of locking and logging uh, because you have concurrency and you need to show uh, what is happening in the background. Um, yeah, you easily have race conditions um, and you also can have, uh, yeah, if one of those jobs is running, uh, uh, it's going wild. Um, you can have fun because, uh, yeah, like I said, it's running every minute. So, um, yeah, your server is maybe uh, soon very dead. So, um, and you also have a heavy database load because you are technically uh, you're using technically elusive data, um, which is a bad idea, of course. Um, and you have to you have to maintain something outside of your PHP project, uh, the cron job. So you have to go or have to access uh, some DevOps material. And of course, this is hard to test um, in, in the scenario of creating multiple, uh, multiple jobs at the same time. So um, yeah, we also try to be clever doing something like this. Um, register a shutdown function, uh, doing a redirect, and the shutdown function is running after the redirect. Um, also works, but again, there's a web server involved. Um, we have no response. Uh, if something is running in the shutdown function, you will have memory leaks, um, and you cannot throw exceptions in the shutdown function um, because there is no exception handler anymore, um, which also is a pretty bad idea. Um, yeah, and you have no execution time limit because you're already in the shutdown function. So please don't try to be clever. Um, yeah, of course, there were um, a lot of people uh, wrapping their head around uh, asynchronous and uh, multi-threading. So there's the extension called pthreads. Um, and when you look at the requirements of pthreads, uh, you see that you need to enable the Zen thread safety, uh, ZTS, um, which must be enabled on PHP build time. So um, if you have a standard PHP installation that is not enabled, um, and <coughs> thus you are not able to uh, install or run pthreads. And pthreads um, are only for CLI-based applications, so no web environment, and you, there's a big warning that you shouldn't use it in web environments. Um, so it's not very suitable for our use case. So again, it need, needs a custom PHP build. Uh, not all extensions are thread safe. Um, so when you enable this thread safety, uh, you may have problems with other extensions in PHP because not all extensions are thread safe. Um, yeah, it's not working in web environment. Um, you have to have a basic knowledge about multi-threading because pthreads is really multi-threading. Um, and yeah, Probably you can leave out the basic because you need knowledge about uh, multi-threading when you use pthreads. It's very complex. Um, yeah, you have a lot of feature and config overhead for such a simple task like an async request. Um, yeah, and you have to uh, uh, the handle the complete process and thread management yourself. So there's also another extension, uh, which is called Process Control, or PCMTL, um, that you can install. Um, again, you need to build a PHP with a flag called Enable PCMTL. Um, yeah, and it only works on Unix. Um, so no Windows, sorry. <laughs> so it needs a custom PHP build. Um, it's not working on Windows, so everybody who's developing on Windows machines um, cannot use it. Uh, 
we also need basic knowledge about Unix processes here. And the complete process management itself is up to you. So you have to fork things, uh, catch them again when they are finished. Um, and there's another option, um, which is called Gearman. Um, I think it's a, a little bit older already. Um, yeah, Th that extension uh, has a lot of requirements because um, you need libgearman, you need libevent, you need UUID, uh, and you need a gearman server. So you need a complete, completely other piece of infrastructure, um, plus a PHP extension. So um, again, a lot of overhead and a lot of configuration that we have, um, and a lot of setup, uh, especially especially on development environments, uh, to get that up and running. So what do we actually want? Um, we want to make asynchronous calls to PHP, obviously. Um, eventually, we want to get the responses of those calls. Um, we don't want any additional infrastructure. We don't want any additional extensions. Um, we would like to have web-like request data handling because we are used to it. So when we are on a web service, we don't want to switch to CLI mode, right? Um, we want to take advantage of uh, opcache because when you have a web request, um, opcache comes into play. Uh, on the CLI mode, opcache is already always disabled. Um, Besides, you enable it especially, but um, usually when you use CLI mode, um, you don't have any opcache. Um, so back, our background workers should not be exposed to the public. So that's uh, the point from the slide before. And we want to have some kind of tunable process management. Okay, now what if I told you that we have a bulletproof process manager already shipped with PHP? Yeah, and you're probably already using it. Um, so who's using PHP FPM? Who set up a PHP FPM by itself? Okay, good. So yeah, we are talking about PHP FBM. It's the PHP Fast CGI Process Manager. So how it usually works when we are doing simple web requests is we have a web server, Nginx or Apache or something like that, uh, which is talking to PHP FBM uh, via Fast CGI protocol. And the PHP FBM has a default pool called VBV, uh, www, sorry, um, which spawns uh, one to end processes. Um, so that looks like this. So we, most of the time we have a master process and this is the uh, default configuration. Um, yeah, and three, uh, three worker processes uh, that are waiting for requests. So um, the initially uh, idea of uh, this talk and the library that I will introduce in the, uh, in the next slides came from a talk by Anne Blankertz uh, in the PHP uh, International PHP Conference in Berlin. Um, he was showing a, a JavaScript application that was talking to PHP FBM um, by a library called JS Fast CGI, whatever. Um, and I said, okay, why can't JavaScript talk to PHP FBM, but we can't? Because we are doing PHP, right? Um, so I, I had a look uh, on GitHub uh, if there is a PHP library that can talk to uh, the fast CGI client or is fast CGI compatible uh, and can talk to the PHP FBM client um, or server. Uh, and I actually found one um, from Pierre Charon. And uh, it was from 2005 or six, I think. Um, it was not maintained for a couple of years. And it was also missing, from my point of view, missing uh, some important features. So uh, that was the point where I started to write uh, or to rewrite uh, the whole library. So there's still original code from Pierrick uh, in that library, and he's uh, still in the uh, uh, in the authors list. So, um, but yeah, I think 90% of the code is new. So um, because his library was uh, PHP 5, uh, this is 7.1 upwards, uh, so it works from 7.1 to 7.3. Um, yeah, I recently released uh, 2.5.0 last week um, with a little bit better error handling, and yeah, it's quite accepted already. Um, 
So what does this library do? Um, let's talk about this, those uh, FBM pools. Um, first thing that we had on the slide was uh, we don't want to uh, make our scripts that we that run in the background public, right? So um, and we also want to have it uh, in an isolated uh, process running. And um, FBM uh, gives us the possibility to create one or more pools, uh, which are isolating resources for us. So um, what I can do is I can define a background pool, uh, which it has, is configured to have no processes uh, when it starts, um, and can spawn up to n processes. Uh, yeah, depends on how I configure it. So I will show you a config later. So um, what does PHP FBM do? Um, PHP FBM sends the request to the pool, uh, and the pool is queuing the request, some kind of. And uh, when the request is handled, it re returns the response back to the PHP FBM, and the PHP FBM returns the response back to the, in this case, the web server. So. Um, this is how those, uh, this um, background pool looks like. This is the minimal configuration. Um, so we say this, this is the name, the background. Um, we need to set user and group for permissions, uh, also for um, the listening permissions. And we can choose if we uh, use a local socket for the communication or if we use a network socket. So we can also do so a network socket and a port. Um, so we can also listen to port 9001 or something like that. So the default, um, default pool is listening to port 9000, which is pretty cool because Xdebug is listening to the same port <laughs> um, by default. Yeah, and what we are doing here is um, there are different kinds of process managers that you can adjust here. Um, and when you say my process manager is the on-demand manager, then you, will, you won't have uh, a master process um, and no child processes when this pool starts. So the default value is dynamic, uh, and dynamic um, says, okay, we have a master process and we have child processes waiting for requests. So, and we say, okay, you can have a uh, maximum 100 children and uh, you should close your children after 10 seconds of idle time. So that is basically all we need. Um, you just put that file uh, in the configuration folder or uh, confd of uh, PHP FBM and restart PHP FBM and um, you're good to go. So um, when you are using the, the client now, um, so this is the library now, um, we just open a new Unix, so Unix domain socket uh, with the same path that we had uh, given in the pool configuration. Yeah, um, that's the only thing that you need. The, uh, we have uh, read and write and connect timeouts here that are default uh, values, so um, you don't have to give them. Uh, and then you just create the client. So like I said, you can do the same thing with the network socket, uh, the, which is just another class. Uh, yeah, and just give it an IP and a port. So uh, yeah, that would be the config for the uh, network socket. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, and now after we created the client, um, yeah, we just can send a request to a specific file uh, on our PHP FBM server. So uh, very important is that file path here. It's like the script file that you have, or that is your Nginx calling uh, on your PHP server. Um, but you don't have an Nginx and you don't have document root, uh, uh, how is it called? Um, yeah, document root is not replaced, so that must be an absolute path with no path traversal in it and no relative path. So it must be an absolute path on your server. Um, otherwise, PHP FBM won't found it because PHP FBM has no clue about any document roots or something like that. So it just needs to find that file on your file system. So. Um, yeah, there's a big hint in the readme because that is failing everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you give the content, uh, which is basically just a 
uh, URL encoded string. Um, and then you can send a request and uh, get a response and get the body. So in this case, of course, this is a, a synchronous request. Um, and what, just to show you uh, how the response looks like, so this is the interface of the response. Um, you get a request ID, uh, you get the headers back, you can uh, ask for specific headers. You get the body, you get the raw response, which is the body including the headers, uh, and you get a duration. Uh, the duration is how long did your request took from uh, request to response. So um, let's send an async request. Um, it's just another method, so send it async. And this async request will give you a request ID back, uh, which you can just um, yeah, print out. So in this case, this is fire and forget, so we don't do anything with the response. If you want to get the response, um, you can say, OK, send the request asynchronously. Um, do something in the meanwhile, and uh, at the end of your script, just read the response for that particular request ID. And yeah, print the body. So I have a short demo later, so um, at the end. Um, what I, for example, added to the library is uh, callbacks, um, because that was the first question when I published the library, hey, why are there no callbacks for responses, and so on. Because everybody's using callbacks in JavaScript, and why don't you use callbacks in PHP? Yeah, um, so you can, for each request, you can add uh, a response callback and a failure callback. Um, so just like you know it from uh, JavaScript, maybe. Um, the response callback, of course, gives you the response back. Um, and the failure callback will give you a throwable, which can be any error or exception. And again, you just have to send a send async request, and you will automatically notify it about the uh, your callback will automatically notify it. And later on, I also added a pass-through callback um, because I had a use case where I sent something to the um, to the worker script in the background, um, and I wanted to stream the output of that worker script directly to my browser. So, um, and that output comes in buffers, of course, because PHP has output buffering. Um, and it's really hard to completely disable output buffering in PHP. Trust me. <laughs> um, yeah, and that buffer uh, is passed to that uh, pass-through callback, so you can handle on your client side or on your requester side um, also the um, output of your worker. So um, then there are multiple ways to wait for the responses. Um, so if you just wait, uh, just call wait for responses, then your um, all your callbacks will be uh, notified. And it, it's basically the same uh, as having a true, a while true loop, um, asking if a particular request ID has a response and then handle the response. Um, so I, I chose to uh, yeah, have an inner and an outer loop um, so that you can hide everything about looping uh, inside the client. Um, but if you already have something like React PHP or something where you already have a, an event loop or something like that, um, you can integrate the client uh, in that loop. That's why we have uh, multiple methods to yeah, ask for um, has a, is re our response is ready or not. So um, that is a pretty easy example because it's only one request, right? So, but we have multiple requests in our use case. Um, and what we can do is we can uh, collect all request IDs uh, from the async request, uh, from or from the request, uh, yeah, can print them out and say, okay, read all the ready responses um, from the, those request IDs and print their body. The problem here is um, that will be end up in sequential uh, responding. So the response will be look like this. So the first request will respond, respond first the second, second, and the third, third, and so on. So no matter how long each worker needs to do their job, um, the responses will come in the same order as the request. So that's may maybe not that uh, uh, what we wanted, because we want to save time. And if one worker is faster than the other, then he should also respond fa faster. Um, and that is what we call reactive. Um, 
yeah, so what you can do is uh, do the same thing, send three requests. Um, and you can say, okay, I will wait for um, unhandled responses or until there are no un unhandled responses anymore. Um, and then read the ready responses. Um, it's the same thing. At, again, it's in an outer loop um, strategy. And that would end up in this, for example. So if the second request uh, is the fastest one, um, we will have different um, order of the responses. And it's, it, overall, it is faster because um, let's assume this yeah, the first one is the slowest one. So uh, let's assume uh, in the uh, previous output, when the first one is the slowest one, everybody else, uh, all the other responses have to wait until the first one is finished, and um, then we'll print their results. And in this case, we will get the second one uh, as first. So this is ordered by response time, and this is exactly what we want. So yeah, like I said, again, this is. Uh, inner and outer loop, so we can say wait for all the responses or ask for unhandled responses and um, handle the ready responses. Um, so you see we have different namings here uh, for uh, wait and handle and read and so on. So always when you see a read method, uh, it tries to read the response directly and the handle uh, or returns the response and the, the handle methods on, are um, calling the callbacks. So if you add any callbacks, um, you will need to have to uh, use the handle methods. So, okay, uh, I promised a quick demo. Yeah, so um, I'm a backend developer, so I suck at front end, and um, I just want to show you. So um, basically, this is the front end of our web service. Uh, I can create a single PDF. Uh, on the right side is the output of the PHP FBM pool in real time, hopefully. And it's not working. Yeah. So there's a background pool client that is spawned, and it's going away after a couple of seconds because I told him so. Um, <clears throat> now we have the example with uh, multiple PDF creations, but in the, yeah. Uh, in the same order as the requests. So as you can see, um, we have 21 processes now. Uh, yeah, and it takes some time because there's a random sleep uh, in the worker. So all the requests are have a different length. Actually, they're all doing the same thing. So we need roughly 19 seconds. And yeah, let's wait until the workers are going away. And now we have um, the multi requests uh, in reactive order. So as you can see, the numbers are not in order. And we need, hopefully, very much less time. Yeah, 12 seconds, okay. Um, before, it were eight seconds, so it was very lot faster. Um, okay, and we actually created, nah, not that PDF. Yeah, wood, wood. So um, <coughs> we just created uh, a lot of PDFs in the background. Uh, actually, why there was no PDF is because uh, VK, WK HTML to PDF uh, library sucks. Um, <laughs> it cannot handle so many requests at the same time. Yeah. So as you as you have seen, um, there is very little configuration that you have to do, um, and probably it's configuration that you already know because you have set up a PHP FBM pool. Uh, that library, you just have to pull via Composer, and then you can play around with the requests or the responses and can do things in the meanwhile. Any questions? Yes? Um, 